Our journey takes us to the capital of Colorado. The only ICE laboratory in America is located on the grounds of the Federal Police in Denver. We have an appointment with the head of the research laboratory, Geoffrey Hargreaves. My name is Kai. Hi. They only use shoes, which let us like think there, there must be something cold here. Yes, I have a small freezer. It's about, well, let's see, it's 150 feet long. And the wow. main storage is 30 below zero. Our working room is minus 24 C. It's best Do you if think we, we work... have proper clothing? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> for about two minutes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then let's go in, Jeff. Here, the research team works with ice samples from all over the world. The cores collected provide information about how climate has changed over the centuries and how it might develop in the future. For this to be plausible, Joffrey's team has to work every day at up to minus 40 degrees. This room is minus 24 C. If your fingers get cold uh, or you feel your nose getting cold, watch, watch everybody around you. If you see white spots, tell them so that they can go out and warm up. White spots? White spots. You're getting frost nip. Pink is okay, white is bad. It means it's free, your flesh is freezing. If we're in long enough, you might get cold stupid. You'll forget why it is you're doing whatever it is you're doing. But that's, that's like the first signs of hypothermia. Over time, your core temperature is going down and it affects people in different ways. Sometimes you can't remember what you're doing. Sometimes you drop things. So just be aware of this. In order to be able to work at these icy temperatures for a long time, the employees have to cover up every time. Once you have this on, you can go to minus 40. It's just a time thing. So you can go into minus 40, but you won't be able to stay as long as you can at minus 24. For 20 years, geologist Joffrey has worked eight hours a day in freezing temperatures. Despite his experience and special wardrobe, the researcher has to be careful to not overextend his stay in the cold. If I stay too long, if I'm not careful, and I stay too long, my fingers hurt. And they'll begin to ache, and I always tell people when they start to hurt, it's time to go out and warm up, and we all do this. It's like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just do one more. I'll, I'll, I'll just do one more piece. And then your fingers are really hurting and you come out and you put them under the hand warmer and they hurt worse as they're warming up. We are now experiencing exactly what it feels like to work at minus 40 degrees. Joffrey opens the doors to the heart of the ice lab. Over 60,000 feet of pure ice are stored here, compiling thousands of years of geological history. For Joff and his team, work is something as long as life itself. With help of their samples, researchers can understand the climate history all the way back to the origins of the first human beings to the present day. We want to know what causes um, the interglacials to warm up. We want to know what causes the glacials to, to get cold again. Uh, we want to know what gases were in the air when various things were happening. We have to go back into the past to figure out what's normal and how it works. If we can understand how it works, we may be able to figure out how things will respond in the future. He works with very special samples. The oldest ice I have is a piece of Vostok there should be a piece that's 3,600 meters deep, and that's 416,000 years old. That's the oldest ice I have in the freezer. And that came from East Antarctica, from underneath what's called the Vostok drill site. The researchers cut the tubular ice samples into quarters of equal size and store them in metal tubes. Many of the samples remain in the ICE laboratory for analysis, but others go to research centers around the world. Today, Joff is preparing a sample from Greenland meant to be shipped to Europe. So this is a piece of Greenland ice sheet core. This piece is about 16,000 years old. It's from 1,841 meters. 
The first time you feel really cold hits you around the 10 minute mark. Joff seems to be able to cope with it very well, so he continues to work relentlessly. Our reporter Joshua, on the other hand, is already struggling with the freezing temperature. Well, as an editor, you just stand around and look silly anyhow. At least the cameraman's still moving. I just ask dumb questions at this point. It feels coldest on my face, but you feel it everywhere, and my hands are freezing. You just try to focus and ask the right questions, but it's not so easy. The samples must be stored at exactly 40 degrees below zero. Only at this temperature can the researchers prevent parts of their ice cube from evaporating. For the researchers, the cores are like travelling in time. Thanks to Joff and his team, other research groups also have access to this huge ice collection. Most of the samples come from drilling in Greenland, Antarctica and North America. But how do these ice capes develop? Over thousands of years, new snow masses press the old snow onto ice. Ash residues from volcanic eruptions or exhaust gases remain trapped in the different layers of ice. If you examine them, you can even draw conclusions about the first human inhabitants and the extreme changes caused by industrialization. Using special drills, researchers can dig deep into the ice layer and pull ice thousands of years old out from the ground. Joff can use the ice to determine climatic changes occurring during the past centuries and even recognize specific periods within them. The thicker layers will tell you that there's more precipitation at that time than at another time. There are some layers that are a little thicker and there are some layers that are a little thinner. Now the thicker layer says there was a lot of precipitation, it snowed a lot. And then the thinner layer tells you it, there wasn't as much moisture, it was not as thin. So it's kind of like tree rings. Sometimes tree rings are pretty thin, that means it was a dry year. Sometimes tree rings are pretty fat, that means it was a wet year. It's the same thing with ice cores. Joff and his team find no evidence in the cores that the weather has ever been as warm as it is nowadays. After almost 25 minutes in the giant freezer, Joff takes his warm-up break. If the researchers stay in the cold rooms too long, it can be dangerous. In order for the body to cope better with the cold, they have to constantly supply it with energy. We drink a lot of water and we eat things that, have, that are high in calories. Um, quite often cookies, fruit and nuts. High in calories, trying to keep yourself warm. Working in these freezing conditions is no easy task for Joffrey and his team. But they are also aware of the impact their research has in acknowledging climate change as a problem. Worrying? Yeah, I'm worried. It's probably not going to bother me in my lifetime, but we're going to have problems in the future. Some people will ask, well, geez, you know, if it's warming so much, how come it doesn't seem to be doing much? Well, it's because the ocean is sucking up the heat. If you had a very large pot of water and you put it on the stove and you turned on the heat, does it instantly boil? No. Why? Because the water sucks up heat. It's got very high... So the oceans are doing the same thing. You add temperature to the atmosphere, the ocean takes it into itself, so it sucks it up and subducts it and runs it to the bottom of the ocean. The ice doesn't only allow for measuring precipitation and air particles. Dr. John Feggiversi is interested in the shape of the ice and the ice crystals trapped inside. This can also help to draw conclusions about what affected the environment in the past. I'm looking at the physical properties, so I'm trying to understand how the ice has deformed and how it's changed. I'm trying to look at the different orientations of the different ice crystals uh, to see if we can figure out uh, the past flow of the ice sheet. Not only researchers, but also the equipment must be isolated from the cold and adapted to work under heavy cover. 
One thing working for them is that the cold in the ice laboratory is dry, otherwise moisture would destroy the equipment. Researchers at the ice lab want to set an example with their research. Because climate change isn't only noticeable in colder regions or parts of the USA, it's a worldwide phenomenon, and that includes Germany. We can hopefully shape policy in the future, not just in our country, but worldwide, to address the issue of climate change and hopefully at least mitigate the problems that are going to face us over the next century or so. With their research, Joff and his team have been able to prove changes in the climate over thousands of years. They work in the freezing cold every day, handling the history of weather, something extremely important for our future.